to all these awesome testimonies. I truly believe that God has sent me here for this very season, yes. this day, and this time. Yes. I tell you, God is so awesome. Yes, yes, he, is. Yes, he, is. Yes, he is. And I really do need to share what was in my closet. I mean, I remember when I was going through my mess, mm -hmm. I would feel like I should have known better. I would say to myself time after time again, I would say, how can I fall so short of God's glory time after time? I would say things like, Lord, haven't I served you faithfully? Why are these things constantly happening to me? Sister Connie, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. Never let the enemy make you ashamed to share what's in your closet. Yeah. Because that's how we all are free. Because we share each other's testimony, and that's how we all are delivered. Amen. 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 And I know that we all felt that way one time or another. And it is that feeling that has caused us to stay locked up in our closets longer than we should have been. But when we let go and let go, we know everything will be all right. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Well, I hope we have a whole lot of time because <laughs> when I begin to give my testimony, I'm going to need to tell the whole role so that you can see, hear, and feel just what and where God has brought me from. Yeah, all right. Yes. All right. Take some time, relax, release, and just let the Lord use you to share it. Amen. Well, I was a minister of music at a big mega church. I was married to the bishop of the church, feeling that my life was so awesome. I mean, I was a woman who loved the Lord, singing, shouting, and praising God for all that he'd done and had given me. I was married to a man at a cloth. I thought my life was just where it needed to be until one day the name calling began. Oh, the black eyes, oh, Jesus. the oh, cheating. Oh, I was being stripped of who I was and I was becoming this person that I was ashamed to be. And I tried to fix it, you know, by taking on more positions at the church. I tried to constantly stay busy so that no one would know my true identity. I was hiding my shame behind designer sunglasses and trying to keep up my appearance by wearing designer clothes. I tried so hard to change into what he wanted me to be. But it was never enough. I started blaming myself, making myself believe that it was my fault. <laughs> Saying things like, well, maybe if I was just there more for him, or maybe it's the church that's too much for him. The more I tried to change for this man, the more he changed for the worse. Oh, my, my. <laughs> and here I was lying to myself, lying to the people in the church, trying to make everybody believe that I had this blessed marriage mm -hmm. and that Bishop was a man after God's own heart, that my husband was a man who loved and cared for his flock when all the while, he was killing one at all. Yeah. Then one day, during church service, the sunglasses that I wore fell off my face, and the mother of the church, she came up to me and saw my face all black and blue and swollen, my eye bloody. I wore a scarf around my neck to cover all the marks that he placed there. I constantly wore long sleeve shirts and long skirts to hide all the bruises that he placed on my body. She looked at me and said, how long, my child? How long have you been hiding in this closet? Tears began to run down my eyes and 
out of fear of my husband, I lied to her. I told her that a mugger had robbed me and that he had beat me so that I wouldn't shame my husband in any way. She hugged me tight and said, baby, I know. Believe me, I know. And then she began to pray for me, saying, Lord, please allow her to be released from this closet that the enemy has had her locked in. Let her know that this is no longer her closet anymore. And as she was praying for me, Bishop walked in and he saw those glasses off my face. And my God, I'll never forget the look that he gave me. It was a look that seemed to say that it was either him or it was going to be me. So that night when we got home, he began to trash the place. He ran out to the garage and he brought back a can of gasoline. He poured it all over me, saying that oh I was going to burn back to hell for disgracing him. Oh, oh, oh. I began to beg and plead. He oh. began to slap me all across the house. Jesus, oh. Jesus. I was begging for my life, but the more I begged him, the more I pleaded with him to stop, the more angrier he became. Jesus. So... I ran into the kitchen, and I saw the butcher knife on the counter. I ran and grabbed it to defend myself. And mm -hmm. He struck a match, and he came towards me at it. And I didn't know what else to do, so I stabbed him. I, I stabbed him. I guess when he poured the gasoline on me, some spilled on him because... Right before my eyes, my husband was ablaze. He was just in on fire. And I tried, I tried, I tried so hard to save him, but my arm began to burn because of all the gasoline that he poured on me. And all I could do was run into the living room to dial 911. But by the time they got there, it was too late. My husband was dead on arrival. Oh, and I blame myself for oh, so many years after that. It's like the enemy kept rewinding this tape over and over in my mind. And I would say things like, maybe if I'd have just told somebody about this earlier, or maybe I shouldn't have come home. Maybe there was so much more I could have done to save him. I wanted up leaving the church after that. I got addicted to drugs, alcohol. I just wanted to die until an angel of the Lord came to me and spoke these words and said, the closet that you have been hidden in for so long is now open. <laughs> you are no longer bound, but you are free. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This had to happen this way so that you could go out and save all of my daughters who are trapped in closets. And after that day, I gained a new outlook on life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's because of God's grace and mercy that I stand here 10 years clean and sober. Yes. I am now a motivational speaker for the cries of Zion Women's Ministry. And now I would like to share this song of praise that helped me when I was going through the things that I was going through. If you don't know it, Regardless of whatever you're going through, God's grace is sufficient for you. Amen. That's all you need to make it through. Whatever life throws your way, yes. just remember that yes. his grace is sufficient for you.